Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make an incline ice dye. For this project, I'm starting by centering my shirt using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. So I've turned the shirt inside out to get the seams on the outside. I just find it easier that way. And then I'm using a washable marker to mark out the center points. So I'm going to tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve, line up all the seams along the underarm and along the shoulder, and if it has side seams, I'll line those up too. And what this does is it creates symmetry. So you will have a mirror image from left to right, and then your dye saturation will be all the same on the front, and then it will be all the same on the back. Next, I'm going to use a washable marker to draw on my pattern. And I'm just freehanding a meandering line down from the bottom up to the top. And then I'm going to pleat along this line, trying to make that line that I drew on as straight as possible. And I'm making these pleats about three quarters of an inch to an inch tall. Now, I find when I'm doing my pleating, if I twist the project as I go to keep the bulk of the shirt out in front of me, it makes it a lot easier to get that line, that green line that I drew on, nice and straight. I want to give a big shout out to the newest channel member. Now I'm probably not going to say this correctly, you guys. Tam Von Vol, 2711. Thank you so much for your membership. I greatly appreciate it. And all of your proceeds will go back into the channel. And that way I can continue to bring out new content. And for those of you that are already channel members, thank you so much for your continued membership. And for all of you that tune in on a regular basis, you've clicked subscribe, you leave a thumbs up, you leave me comments, it really helps keep me motivated so I can just continue on my tie-dye journey and sharing it with you guys. And hopefully I'm able to inspire and it helps get the content out there for new people that are learning how to tie-dye. And now that we're moving into spring weather and summer weather. There are going to be so many more new tie-dyers coming aboard in this their tie-dye journey. So um, I'm excited. I always look forward to the summers. Things slow down in the winter time, but when summer comes, everybody's outdoors wanting to wear bright colors. And so things pick back up. So stay tuned for lots of new and fun content. For this project, I'm using my pleating tools to help me make those pleats nice and uniform. So I got these pleating tools from Jen and John over at boredomwithjen.com. There is a link down below that will take you directly to her website, but it is www.boredomwithjen.com. Jen and John make all the tie-dye tools that you see me use. So the sinew puller and the matching caddy set, uh, the little funnel scoops, these uh, pleating tools, they all come from Jen and John. Jen is a tie dyer herself, so she makes what we need and her product is amazing. So I highly recommend that you check that out. So again, the link is down below in the description box 
And then at the end of the video on the end screen, and if you're using a, a cell phone or an iPad, it'll pop up and you can just click right on that. It will also take you directly over to her website. For this project, I'm using sinew to tie it off. Normally you guys see me use rubber bands, but I wanted to try something a little bit different with this one. Sinew is a wax covered string that resists the dye. So I want to have flows on this shirt, but I want to interrupt them a little bit and see if I can create some additional patterns in the dye. So what I do is I wrap it around two or three times and then I pull it pretty tight. I'm not pulling it quite as tight as I would for a geode, but I am st still pulling it quite tight. And when I do pull it, I hold my hand down flat across the top of the pleats. And what that does is it helps keep the pleats from wanting to buckle over on top of each other. The goal with your pleats is to always have them about the same height. The inspiration for this shirt came from the other Scott Walker. So what are the chances that I have two Scott Walkers in our group that both make tie-dye and they both make very similar looking tie-dye. So we have Scott Walker from Rad Dyes, which you guys know from the live streams and from being in the group. But this is the other Scott Walker, Scott T. Dyer. So both guys had to change their names because I couldn't keep track of who I was talking to from post to post or from private message to private message. So if you go on Facebook and you find Scott T. Dyer or you're in our community group, Belladonna Dyes Community Tie Dye Group, you can look back through his pictures and you can see uh, where I gained the inspiration for this shirt. I do recommend that you check him out on Facebook on his business page. He makes really pretty tie dye, just like Scott Walker Rad Dyes also makes really pretty tie dye, but he might have some things for sale if you guys are interested. So um, Scott T. Dyer, Scott Walker, if you're seeing this, yes, you are the inspiration for this shirt. So thank you very much for sharing your work in our group. And for those of you that maybe don't know what I'm talking about when I'm referring to the group, I have created a Facebook group and it's a learning group and the link for it is down below in the description box, but it's called Belladonna Dyes Community Tie Dye Group. And we're at about 5,000 members now, you guys. And that's really exciting.
Now there's just a couple spots that have a little bit of tag sticking out, so I'm using my tiny baby hair rubber bands just to pick those up and down on the tips just to hold everything together nice and tight. Now it's time for the fun part, we get to add the dye. And this is my first time using Pro Chemical and Dye, the color Load In, and I'm really excited about it. I've seen some pictures in the Facebook group and I'm excited about it because I think it's going to have some really nice splits. Now I'm applying my dye to the sinew lines and I'm using my funnel scoops that I got from boredomwithgen.com. Now I'm adding a really generous layer because I have no intentions of flipping this project over. So first I'm laying down my first line just so I can get the spacing the way that I want it. And then I'm gonna go back over and thicken those lines up just a little bit. Then I'm also going to use the back of my picnic spoon to smooth the die on. I find for me that when it comes time to add the ice to the project, if I have it kind of like nice and mashed down on top of the project, when the ice hits it, it doesn't knock the die all over the place as much as if I just left it in like tall little piles of dye. So try it out for yourself and see if that works for you. Next, I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. Not sure if it's necessary, but this is just what I do. It's my habit. And then I like to create some type of an ice dam down at the bottom of the gutter. That way I don't have to fill the whole entire gutter up with ice. So that's a silicone cake mold and some clothes pins. I'm using my Frigidaire Nugget Ice Machine Ice on this project. I use it as often as possible. I absolutely love and adore this machine. Right now, I don't think they're available for purchase, but as soon as um, Amazon or wherever gets more, I will let you guys know. And then I'd just like to make sure that I add enough ice to where I don't see any of the fabric showing through. Now, since this is an incline ice die, I put the bottom of the gutter down inside the tote and the top of the gutter is hanging up outside the edge and gravity and that incline is going to create all the dye to drip down inside the tote and create some cool patterns, I hope. Now, up here at the very tip, I find that I have a lot of saturation issues, so I just put a little sprinkle of dye up on top just to help out with that. And then it's recommended that you let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. And this project ended up batching for the full 48 hours. At around 48 hours, the project is kind of already dry, so I like to untie it before I start rinsing. And look at those color splits. I'm super excited, all of this from just one color of dye. And this shirt will be going into the playlist of the Pro Chem single color ice dyes. So I recommend that you check that out. Now for the rinse out process, I like to start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then I increase my water up too hot and I rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon, a professional textile detergent. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft, which is a professional fabric softener. And then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. 
Well, here it is, guys. Here's our incline ice dye after it's been washed and dried, and I really do enjoy the way this shirt looks. I'm not typically an earth tone type of tie dyer. I like the purples, you guys know that, but there's just so many pretty colors in this one shade of dye. So if you don't have Pro Chems Loden, I highly recommend it. I mean, it's really just quite stunning. It has a really pretty sort of uh, split pea soup type color, but then it also has some grays, some dark browns, some coppery, orangey type colors. It's just, it's really beautiful. And you know, you can't, you can't go wrong with colors that split like this. So make sure that you pick yourself up some. So overall, I'm super pleased with the way it turned out. What do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie dyeing.